So we got uh, we've we've been joined by Larry Larson. Uh, if there's you know another homie that I like to hang out with, and he's been a big supporter of some of the races and no prep races I put on. Uh, my homie Eric Bain over here, a fellow beard man, uh, boosted ego in the house. You know we just we got him, and there's a guy that's as dedicated. He just you know he he's got a team around him, whether it's HVP or any of those guys. They just show up to win, and that's I mean he's driven to win. You know, he basically created a rule. You know, there's not a lot of people that like that, but the man is deadly on the instant green tree and is definitely a Larry can attest to it too. He put some people on the trailer on a car that should never even have been on the track. You know? Yeah. And then, you know, that's what you got to do when you, when you come, you know, bring a little uh, knife to a gunfight. But, you know, it started out as having fun and them not having enough cars to fill the class is really how it started. Um, you know, and that's how we got started racing the Mustang. So you got to take chances when you're out gun, and that's all we did. And uh, it turned out to be pretty fun. So uh, talk a little bit about the, the instant green and, and the controversy of reaction times and what have you in the instant green. I, you know, there's a lot of people that don't understand how a Christmas tree works in reality, including most of the people lined up at one on a drag strip. Um, <laughs> and so uh, it always causes a lot of arguments and stuff. So, Eric, what are, you, what are your thoughts and what have you done to, to take advantage? You know, the instant green just, it basically, you know, leaves a lot on the table. Um, you know, now that I've played both sides of it, it really freaking sucks to get, you know, instant green, basically someone leaving before the green and, and lose, but, you know, cause it's a half a second, you know, up to, um, you know, and sometimes more depends on how late you are on the tree when you see green. So, um, but everyone has the same, um, opportunity if you say, but, it does suck to go out like that, but it's just part of racing. Um, and, you know, trying to keep it street-like, in my opinion. Larry, you and I were at an Armageddon race where uh, there was a whole lot of controversy about this because the tree, like at most of the no-prep events, was not actually instant green. It was uh, that they just pulled the yellows out. Um, there's a difference. Um, when you pull the yellows out of the Christmas tree, when they would have come on, and then four tenths of a second, the green light coming on. Um, what people don't understand is that most timing systems between seven tenths and 1.1 seconds uh, from the time that both cars are staged is when the tree will come down. And so basically, if you just do a one 1,000 and let go of the button, eh, you're going to be you know, somewhere near it. Um, and, and so it caused a lot of controversy with Mike Marillo and you and I, and another bunch of people. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole instant green world? If it was instant green, I'd be all about it, but unfortunately it's not. And like, like Eric says, it's, it's part of, it's part of that series. Uh, and just like he said, you know, you can be at four tenths, maybe even five tenths ahead of the other guy if you guess it just right. Uh, it's like I tell everybody what, what aggravates me about it is that I go there to race. If I wanted to gamble, I'd go to Vegas. And that being said, you know, I hate it when people, when people guess. I mean, if your car's not fast enough, God forbid, go home and work on the damn thing. I mean, that's what the rest of us do. Uh, there's always going to be, it seemed like there was about 10% of the guys last year that were taking shots and stuff. And the rest of us were racing. And, and like I said, I know Eric, Eric got his ass busted once last year by, I don't know what the hell you did left early for no good reason when you had somebody covered. I don't even remember who it was. I'm sure you did. I, I did. And that's a long ride home, brother. <laughs> Well, and, and what other, uh, that one is one that I will tell you, I don't know if anybody's told you this, and I don't know if the NPK guys will care, but um, but the folks at CompuLink have, um, have revised their system and created an instant green format that anybody can use. You don't have to actually understand how to use the system. And so it will be a random generated instant green, whether or not the series will use it or not, I don't know. But that is coming, just to let you know. You know, really, really, I think the series needs a change up. And I, I really think 
the flashlight start or something like that would be better. I volunteer um, to be the flashlight you know, guy. If they're trying to, I'm in. If they're trying to imitate the street and this and that, but I mean, and you could still use the, the finish line beams, you know, to, to rule that out, but I don't, their tree sucks. What I, mean, what I told them last year after that fiasco with Bobby is that if they want to make it more like the street, I'm all about it. I said, just use the tree just like you're using it. Don't change a thing there. Put a camera up there and do it just like the street, just like on the street. If yes. that tire cracks, you're yep. out. Done. And it, and it would, people at home would, at, the, at this point, the fourth season, we're going to start needing a change. And yeah. at this time, in my opinion, would be a good time to change it up on on the light or, you know, on the line, something just well, to keep it more interesting. They don't just well, have... Every, well, they don't just have the starter drop the tree. If four bulbs or somebody goes in deep, everybody's in, ready to go, just have the starter flip it. I got homies up there saying, hey, uh, wait, two thousand, wait, they'll burn it. They'll burn everybody down because they don't know about turbo cars. The people up there working in trees. Yeah, there's some, that, that is the most crucial person on the facility is the starter. Look, I've been I've been I'm on the street in Mexico, of course, um, with a flashlight on cash days events. Never, ever, ever had a problem with pulling people in nitrous car versus turbo car, blower car versus turbo car, pair of turbo cars. Everybody can come to an agreement as to how you want the starting line procedure to work. And if you use the stage bulbs on the Christmas tree and the finish line still, you could do it as a flashlight start. It would be very, very simple to do it. No problem. I mean, that's how they do the roll race stuff. But the thing that you got, right, but the thing that you've got right now is this is what I told them: is that everything you could leave it just exactly like it is right now. Just put a camera up there, that's true. just like they do at Armageddon, and watch for the crack of the tire in the story. Because the the thing about it now with the instant grip, yes, I say instant green, but with the way the tree works and with the with the real time finish, you get it you get a finish line result just as soon as the cars go across. And that way you can keep the race going and you're not back looking at film at the other end. You're not worried about, okay, did this guy go in too deep or anything else? Because everything would be exactly like it is now. You still you still have the uh, seven-second auto start engaged, everything else. So <laughs> nobody can play any games. Everything just don't change anything. Just put a camera up there and watch for the cracker. If, if the tire cracks for the green light, then you're up. Because all three of the races that I lost, I would have won because I cracked the tire. Um, yeah. Is there any other rule that's nearly as controversial as the instant green to you guys? Yeah. I don't mean. think so either. <laughs> so so let's get into, because we could talk about singles versus twins versus blowers versus all that. But, but let's talk about this one because this one is just one that chaps certain people's ass. Who should run and be on no prep kings? Is the system fair? I mean, who should get the chance to be in the series. I mean, I don't know who you want to chime in first, but <laughs> Sounds like um, you. you know, for, first and foremost is a TV show. Um, it's really not a race. <laughs> you just go there to race. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, they're going to need some new faces and just, I don't know. That's a tough question. That's a broad question. Um, you Do know, you but know? obviously everyone, Everyone thinks they're entitled to race, um, but a lot of people haven't put the work in and been through the ropes so like then, a lot of us have. So here's the thing then. Do you do you think – like here's a scenario I've talked about with people and, and gotten mixed reviews on as well, um, and I didn't think of this. But let's say you take, you know, the, the points, right, what the points are for the series, and you go, okay, the top ten guys or whoever get to be in, um, and you got so many then down here that get to fight for a position. I know that that's basically how it works now, but – um, but the number of people that get to fight in or race their way in is only a couple of people. Um, should they change it to where half the field gets to race their way in so that people can pay those dues and fight their way into the big main event? The problem, I say problem, it's hard because the amount of races we have now and the amount of travel that it involves and for the guys that are willing to make that sacrifice uh, and spend that kind of time and money, you know, there's probably, what, 20, Eric, maybe that probably try to make every one? But, yeah, you know, um, there's, it definitely starts to narrow down there. 
Yeah, and this year I think it's going to be even worse because they they put they stacked another four races on us. They've got us ever, everywhere from Palm Beach to Seattle to New Hampshire to Tucson. So I don't I don't even see some of the some of the contracted guys making it all this year. I haven't missed a race, I haven't missed a race since Bowling Green, Kentucky, um, and we only went there in season one. I mean that's and that's commitment. Whether I had a car, I didn't have a car, I had oil pressure, or didn't have oil pressure, but I was racing with something. And, you know, there's not a whole, like Larry said, not, not, there's not a whole lot of guys that can say that. And so at some point, you got to take the loyalty of the show versus someone's character. You know, not, and like Bobby, he ain't the fastest guy, but, man, he's at every race, and he's the character of the show. And guess what? He's going to have to race his way in and might not ever make the show again. And I don't know if that's right or not. You know, he's been there from day one. Granted, he don't have unlimited funds to make his car as fast as it should be. And it is, you know, it does need to be faster. But it's Bobby Ducati, and, you know, he's part of the show. So, I don't know. That's that's his catch-22, really. I think boxing gloves. Let's use boxing gloves. I think it'd be great. <laughs> I know some of y'all would fight just for the hell of it anyway. <laughs> there should be a bonus at the end of every event you get to call out somebody into the boxing ring after the shit that just went down for the rest of the weekend holy crap can you imagine that dude people would be beating each other's asses dude oh well hell yeah have you seen those giant arms they're almost as big as mine (laughs) (laughs) here they are (laughs) i mean james is good Oh, this year is going to be crazy. You know, we're counting on going to Tucson with probably 60 to 70 racers trying to do a qualifier. And, I mean, if you have one bag showing there, you're going to have to race your way in in Georgia. And I don't know, man. That's just – that's yeah, that's a so, mess, you know. And, uh, of course, of course, everyone wants in, but where were all those people, you know, three or four yeah. years ago? They're over we're, in the real world yeah. with Duck, you know. Yeah, where were all those – are there all those racers when a couple three races we only had 28 or 30 cars exactly you know and and looking for class fillers people were and, racing uh, daily drivers so, just to keep the but, points up but it ain't about the racers it ain't about the fans at this point it's it's all yeah. a uh, it's a business and and that's what a lot of racers really have not comprehended yet is it's a business first and um a tv show second and then later on down the line, about number 15 or 16, it's race. You hit on a pretty good one there, Bane. Uh, as a business, I mean, you're a, a sole proprietor. You're a business operator. You're sitting in your business right now. Larry, same way. Your very first race is going to be SGMP June 12th and 13th. Next weekend, you're going to have to be in Virginia Motorsports Park. And then the third weekend, back to back to back, you're going to have to go to Maple Grove in Pennsylvania. So what is that like as a business owner to put everything on hold just to make these races? Because you're not coming back to Texas from Georgia and turn on drive all the way to Virginia. Yeah, yeah, Larry will have to. He'll yeah. go back and forth. I'll be, yeah, there I'll you be go. Fine. I will. Well, you know, we... <laughs> but that, that's where it goes. That's where it goes to the point where they don't care about us. They don't care about anything. They care about getting these races off and no matter the circumstances. And that's what's going to happen. There's 17 other guys. This whole pandemic deal really made it hardest on the races. It it don't come down on any harder, but really the races. I feel sorry for you guys. Yeah, they don't care who shows up. They just want racers there. And and if you're not there, oh, absolutely. Because everybody is waiting for their shot at it. And, and, you know, Eric, we appreciate it for sure. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Can we, can we get you back on the show for another episode if we want to? Awesome. Awesome. And hey, uh, when this is all done, maybe uh, Barrett and I will jump in the car together and we'll come road trip over there to Greenville and we'll uh, drink a beer and hang out and check out the new place. Or you can come out to mine and walk the hatchy and we'll see what's going on. Get some beard products. Yes. Sounds good. But all that, you know, it's what we choose to do. We enjoy doing it. And No Prep Kings is really good for the sport, really good for the kids at home. And, uh, you know, looking forward to making all the races. Well, we appreciate it. Good yeah, luck, brother. We'll about. see you there this year for sure. And, um, and again, thank you so much for tuning in and, and being a part of the show. 